think you know everything about Breath of the Wild? Well, we've got even more secrets for you. If you continue to follow this series and want us to keep making more, just hit that like button. All right, here we go. Players have seen this ball and chain mechanism with some Korok puzzles hidden around Hyrule. But did you know that this chain can actually snap in half? Weird part about this is this only happens when enough force is put on the chain. And the chain doesn't simply disappear immediately, it actually does snap in half. Until it touches solid ground at least, then the connecting chain will disappear fully. When something is cooked or frozen, they actually have different skin properties. Shooting a normal or ancient arrow into a piece of raw or cooked meat will puncture it as you think it should. But if it's frozen solid, it'll actually bounce off because of the frozen solid skin. Here's some advanced combat 101 for you. When you shoot at a choo-choo jelly, there's a couple tricks for combat that could be useful pertaining to shock damage. Shooting shock arrows at jellies normally doesn't do anything, but a basic trick is to stasis your choo-choo jelly first, then shoot it with shock arrows to do area of effect damage. But that's not the only way to trigger this. If the choo-choo jelly switches elements during bullet time by shooting next to it, there's about a second or so that it can't be destroyed. So again, with a shock arrow, you can use this to conduct electricity. But even further, players have even combined this neat trick with an old combat technique called SJC, or Shield Jump Cancel, to get bullet time and drop materials at the same time. For players who haven't dived into advanced combat, Shield Jump Cancels have led to players finding some really neat combinations, such as shooting a spicy pepper or sunshroom with a fire arrow to updraft right out of an SJC. Or the fanciest of them all, throw a boomerang, SJC, and drop a flint and pepper together to have the boomerang hit the flint, light the pepper, and send you sky high. If you want to learn about this trick, there's a bookmark to my combat glossary in the description below. There's a common interaction between wandering travelers and Link when up against enemies. After the shuffle, the NPCs will give Link a small reward, depending on how tough the enemy was. But this is based on three levels, easy, medium, and hard enemies. Thing is, the dramatic hard interactions are very, very rare if not impossible for most NPCs in normal gameplay, because they design these traveling NPCs to follow roads that almost never cross paths with gold and silver enemies. So the only way to get these messages is to glitch or kite these enemies on purpose along with you and force them to fight them near NPCs. Then you can finally see these rare conversations that probably very few players have ever seen. There's tons of missable mini interactions if you pay close attention in every town, including Hateno Village. Such as the kids following you with the blue flame, and a flock of sheep taking shelter under the tree at night or during rain. You can also get another limited interaction with the kids staring at Pura's lab, where if you get in their line of sight, they actually tell you to move out of the way, and even get physically upset if you move in front of them. Kula the Korok in Korok Forest asks for specific wands during a side quest. But did you know that the reward will change depending on which rod is brought? Such as the weaker ice rod to the stronger blizzard rod, which will reward 100 rupees or 300 rupees instead. Through the compendium, players can collect pictures of many items including equipment, enemies, flora, and fauna. These of course can then be used to track specific things around Hyrule. One of them used to be this. Yep, very early in development, Koroks were supposedly trackable through the Sheikah Slate. This compendium image of a Korok was listed as NPC Hidden Korok Ground, and the mask textures were still missing entirely. But later in development, they must have switched this idea to have the Korok mask specifically have this ability instead. If you're a collector in Breath of the Wild, chances are you've run into an annoying problem. There's a limit on how many armor pieces you can hold, with 107 total pieces of armor in the game with DLC, and duplicates that you could easily get, the 100 armor limit may be a nuisance. But there are some interesting interactions that come with this unique situation when trying to get additional armor, especially through story beats, such as La Flat telling you your pouch is too full for the Zora Greaves, Kima saying he's truly not trying to cheat you out of a deal for the fireproof gear, and Bozai thinking your bag is too full of cute boots to hold any more items. A second side effect of this is with Vilia specifically. During the cutscene where Link dons the disguise for the first time, Link wears this outfit. But if you hit the armor limit, the disguise won't fit in your bag, and you'll just come out wearing whatever you had on. Whoa! 
adorable. Stamina usage changes depending on how harsh the angle of the inclines and declines you're climbing on. But did you know that you have an outright stamina penalty when climbing in the rain? Besides the obvious slipping, it actually takes more stamina to climb while it's raining. But not only that, there's a developer oversight with this. Because in some situations while it's raining, but you're in a covered area, you'll still get the stamina penalty. Meaning in situations like this with Sheikah Towers will take more stamina to climb even though it's technically a dry surface. Whoops. The Zora, Rito, Goron, and Gerudo of course have special weapons tied specifically to their race. But Nintendo's development for these weapons had a ton of forethought put into their designs. Such as Gorons, who have two-handed weapons, but not one-handed, because all of their two-handed weapons are used as one-handed weapons because of their large stature. So a single-handed weapon would be way too small. And they don't use shields because, well, they're Gorons. Rito, on the other hand, are the opposite. They don't have two-handed weapons because of the heavy weight needed to carry around that kind of weapon while flying. Even their weapons they already have are lightweight, such as a kite shield made out of cloth or feathered weapons but with inset holes to reduce the weapon's weight. The Gerudo focus on their shields with aptitude for shield surfing, and the Zora love their spears, making all of their equipment out of silver, which pure silver never rusts, perfect for an aquatic environment. You know each race focuses on these equipment specifically because for their preferred equipment it always comes in a set of three. We explained before how Nintendo previously planned to use ruby, sapphires, and topaz to craft your own elemental arrow recipes. While that didn't make it into the game, elemental stone usage is in the game just through lore instead. Each elemental circlet has a respective element equipped into the metal. But not only that, every elemental weapon has an element infused stone at the bottom of the blade, otherwise known as the weapon's pommel. These hold the rubies, sapphires, and topazes in place to power the elemental properties of the weapon. During development, one of the best ways they tackled production issues and ideas was through a system that let their staff leave physical comments in-game for developers to see and fix. This system they designed was called Zelda Error, which made it quick and easy to drop a comment whenever they ran into an issue, and was even doable while the game was running live, which made the debugging process hassle-free. According to Takuma Oisa, QA engineer and programmer at Nintendo, this was the first ever Zelda in the series to implement this system, and with how polished this game came out in the end, I won't be surprised if they use this ingenious QA system again. What was your favorite thing you learned this time? Let us know in the comments below. We of course still have an ongoing playlist with all the latest Breath of the Wild content still coming, so keep it here on GameSpot.